doing down here at Sun and Fun? <laughs> well, I'm shooting. Uh, uh, I'm shooting and flying LSA. It's you know it's hard work, but somebody's got to do it. So now, how long have you been doing this? I started shooting aircraft and flying them for uh, ultralights back in the back in the mid to late 70s. I, I'm sorry. How many of the sport aircraft have you flown now? Uh, this makes probably 40 or 41, I think, the Super Stole here. So, so, so you've got working away with through about 30% of the, the airplane now. That's so about far. right, yeah, yeah. Everything from that wonderful storage that we both appreciate it so much to... Uh... Well, you had one opinion, I had another, but <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's the way that it goes. Now, I have flown the airplane behind you, not this particular one, but the regular Highlander. Ah. Did a flight report on it, and it's a great little airplane, and the people behind it are... Uh, they're down-to-earth types of guys. So, how do, was your experience on the airplane? I have uh, about 15 or 20 hours in a J3, which I haven't flown in a year, but having tail dragger endorsement uh, gives you some set of parameters to uh, gauge it by. All I can say is it's a sweetheart to fly. It's so light in the controls. I mean, compared to a Cub, for instance, it's like... Yeah, you and know. you've got all that slop in a cup too. Uh, it's, yeah. You, know, you move a stick one way or the other and nothing actually happens. Yeah, you got to really yeah. give it a pretty good stick and stomp on the rudder. This likes a little bit of rudder with it, but it rolls. It's really a quick and effortless roll. It's beautiful, beautiful to fly. I, you know, I say this whenever I fly something, uh, I, I carry a tape recorder with me and record it through the uh, intercom. And uh, I'll, I'll right away try to do some Dutch rolls and see how well I do. And I, I was able to not nail them, but I mean, I was really right on it right away. It's just very natural, intuitive to fly. Very light in controls. Pitch is slightly heavier, but not much. Trim lever down by your hand is wonderful. You just drop your hand, it's right there. So you've got this really nice trim lever. And it needs a fair amount of trim because those slats pop out with a, a rather dramatic announcement. When he gets it to a certain speed, kaboom, out comes the left slat. And then kaboom, out comes the right one, usually in that sequence. And uh, and all of a sudden your nose pitches up and so you trim forward a little bit, easy to do. It's a mechanical lever, by the way, it's not electric. And you're just cruising along at like a ridiculous amount of speed. We had into the wind, 18 mile an hour, mile an hour, uh, no, that's probably not. It's 18 knot uh, ground speed turned downwind and I think we got it down to 40 knot, uh, knots ground speed. So averaging them out, the thing gets really, really slow. Yeah, because this is a special style of uh, airplane and it's designed for short field takeoffs and landings, that type of thing. Right. We dropped in, uh, you didn't see the landing, but uh, we came in and he, he couldn't do a high performance landing here. They won't let him do it. So we just did a, a modest kind of normal Highlander Superstole landing as, as he explained it to me, where we're just coming in a nice 30 degree Nose up angle probably, 20, 30 degrees, but also at a descent rate of about 30 degrees or angle. So we're just coming down like a parachute and then the tail wheel hits and about a second later, kaboom, the front tires hit and it just nails, this big strut just soaks up the, uh, yeah, the impact, you don't bounce at all. Apparently you, the, between the compression on the strut and the compression on the tire, you have like 20 inches of movement in the... Well, you know more than I do, I haven't got a number, but I guess that's right. Because you saw me pushes up the wing and the whole thing goes up about a foot taller, foot and a half taller. It's pretty cool. I'm very enthusiastic about it. I really enjoy flying it. So was there any rudder pressure on the airplane when you're flying? It's uh, it's it's very balanced with everything else. So you know, very light. Uh, I mean, it's not flaky. You know, you don't touch it. You're yawn like crazy. It just feels. It just feels just right for the aileron control. Like I was just putting in a, you know, a few pounds of pressure with the left foot. And, Rolling it over just felt as natural, much lighter, for instance, than a Cub. Uh, not unlike uh, the most recent Fly Design CT I flew, for instance, which is a totally different kind of airplane. This is really in the regime of very light and responsive LSA, which is uh, uh, surprising. I was expecting it to be a little heavier. It feels very light. What about pilot comfort? I mean, you're a fairly tall individual. Did you fit into the airplane half these? I'm 5'11", and he's got a, uh, a camber in the, in the, uh, I, the uh, what do you call that thing over there, the skylight uh, above your head. And I had a good six, seven inches above my head. And he sits on a cushion to raise him up so he can see over the cowl when he's on the ground. Uh, I didn't have that, so I couldn't quite see over the cowl, but it's much better, better visibility than like a J3, for instance. And uh, uh, the seats are very comfortable. It's a complaint I have about some LSA, the seats kind of hurt your butt after a while. Seat belts, uh, you know, four position uh, belts, so. Were you able to open the doors at all when you were flying? Or? No, damn it, I meant to do that. 
Okay. Um, no, but he f says he can fly them at, uh, they open up, they're on gas struts, they'll stay open, up to about 60 miles per hour, they don't recommend it faster. But he said he's, he had them pop open once he forgot to latch them at 110. And, uh, you know, didn't rip off and go flying, but it scared him a little bit, so he slowed down right away. So what are they powering this one with? It's got a Rotax 912. That's and 100 horse, the ULS? 100 horse, yeah. Yeah. So what kind of cruise were you able to get in? We were uh, we were cruising along, God, probably about, uh, I probably saw about 80 uh, miles per hour, but his airspeed's off, so I can't really say accurately. But, uh, so and I don't know what his top cruise is. I haven't had that conversation yet. We, uh, the airspeed's not calibrated correctly, so okay. I stopped. What about looking. RPM? What uh, RPM were you cruising at? About 52, 53. 52, so yeah. 52, 80 to 85 miles an hour? Around there, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. He, it'll do over 110, he said that, so. Now, control system-wise, everything was in an area that was comfortable as far as uh, flying? The stick was in a good position, the flaps, that type of thing? Absolutely. The flap panel, he was having a little trouble with it. He needs to uh, put a different lube in it, he said, because it was sticking a little bit on him. But it's a big Johnson bar type thing, and uh, got a long lever arm, probably about about that long. And he's hauling it back, and those flaps come down. He's got 15, 25, and 40 degrees flaps. Can't, I can't believe I remember all this stuff. It's a good thing you got me right away. Um, give me two minutes, and you know, I'd be gone. And uh, uh, pulling in the uh, flap, it's, you know, it takes a fair amount of effort, but it's it's real positive, and those things suck right down and changes the pitch dramatically, as you'd expect with these big flaps he's got. He's Got uh, freeze ailerons on it, but he's going back to differential later on. So he thinks he likes those better. But for my money, he doesn't need it for the adverse yaw. Uh, it, it has very little. I mean, it's certainly nothing you can't just just tap away and over you go and rolls beautifully. Did I say the visibility of the top is really great too when you're in a roll? Yeah. I mean, I, I was just going to ask you about the visibility sideways and uh, excellent. As you're doing turns and stuff. Yeah, it's really nice. A nice big open area because you're, you're actually sitting up pretty well. Okay. The, what about visibility as you're taking off? Well, I couldn't uh, until the wheel, tail wheel comes up, which in this airplane is about one to two seconds, honest, honest to God, one to two seconds for the tail pops, uh, at least in the light breeze we got today. Uh, I couldn't see over the cowl with the cushions, I could have. But uh, I was probably just looking below the tops of the trees over there, uh, much less extreme than in a Cub J3, for instance. And uh, nothing I would feel uncomfortable with at all, even without the cushion. You know, I felt comfortable flying it the way it was. What kind of climber rate did you feel that you were getting, uh, you know, for that? He doesn't have a VSI in there because I wanted to check that out, but uh, it's robust. So it sounds like you had a good time in the, uh, what's this called anyway? It's a STOL? Uh, it's a Super Stole. Super Stole. Yeah, the uh, Highland, well, I don't know if it's a Highlander Super Stole or just the Just, just Aviation, aircraft Just stole. Aircraft Super Stole. Um, but yeah, I really did enjoy it. You know, there's some airplanes you get into and you roll on the ground, okay, they feel good on the ground. I mean, it's very easy to uh, taxi and handling in the air is beautiful, uh, very responsive to power and trim. Uh, there's nothing about it I didn't like. Very, very comfortable in it. It's a, it's a kit built airplane still. They are working on a, uh, an SLSA version, um, but that may not be till next year because they've got so many orders they're just too busy cranking out airplanes. Um, Thank you very much for your time. Man. You're welcome. Thank you.